Hi, this is Dave Ray. Thanks for joining us again. We're on our second installation of a series of uh, videos we're going to make here along the border. Uh, I'm with FAIR, the Federation for American Immigration Reform. We're the nation's largest and oldest immigration reform organization. And joining us is Chris Harris, who's a retired Border Patrol agent. He actually spent 20 years of his life here in this sector. And Chris, I thought this would be a perfect visual and a perfect opportunity for us to talk about the importance of border walls. I recall when I first worked for FAIR, now I'm dating myself a little bit, but this was in the late 1980s, I actually stood up on a hill over in this direction with the former commissioner of the Immigration Service. Now at that time, there were really no structures on the border between the United States and Mexico. There was a toppled down chain link fence that wouldn't have kept my grandma in her wheelchair from coming into the United States. And FAIR in the late 1980s came out with the idea in a study we published called 10 Steps to Stopping Illegal Immigration. And one of the things that we called for was uh, border structures, including walls and fencing, right here on the U.S.-Mexico border in about two to 300 miles of border at the time. And it was primarily in areas like we have here in Southern California where behind us you have Tijuana, Mexico, it, it abuts right to the United States. And we felt that about 90% of illegal alien crossings uh, could be stopped by putting up this kind of structure uh, on the border. Since then, uh, our, we came out with our idea in 1988, a uh, couple members of Congress from Southern California, including Duncan Hunter Se Sr., uh, if you see the the brown wall right up on the top, dark brown, that was the initial wall put up uh, by uh, the, the congressional delegation of, of uh, California and some others who wanted to get, and, and the Border Patrol, who really wanted to get something here. And then more recently, we have the fence behind yes. me that's the new <laughs> fence that's being added. And the point here is that if it wasn't for these structures here at this border, the 10,000 people who are on the other side waiting to come into the United States would already be in here. In fact, when I stood here years ago with the Commissioner of the Immigration Service, hundreds and hundreds of people ran by us as we stood right there. There was no stopping it. So Chris, why don't you talk about you know, your firsthand knowledge as an agent, uh, the importance these border structures have meant to you how they've saved lives of the Border Patrol, and how important they've been. So, uh, we got a lot of noise here because we're actually in a working area. They're building, replacing that old Duncan Hunter fence. When I came to the Border Patrol 21, 22 years ago, in 1997, we didn't have all the infrastructure we have. It's not just walls, it's infrastructure. And so that's the fences, that's the roads, all that stuff is the infrastructure. When I came out here on the Chula Vista side, we were catching a thousand people a night. A thousand a night. Wow. My, my record is the same group three times in one night. <laughs> Caught them, let them go, they went back to Mexico. So it was Caught them, went back to Mexico. The revolving door of the illegal immigration because there were no border structures. And, and it bothered me so much that a senior uh, supervisor said, Chris, you're just a speed bump, remember that. Well, I've been a cop, I didn't want to be a speed bump. My men and women don't want to be speed bumps. So we need that infrastructure, you need that mix of infrastructure, technology, and manpower. And with all three, we can secure the border. So we're pointing out that there is an older fence up there that was made with old aircraft matting that they used in Vietnam to build temporary helicopter landing fields. It's eight foot high. And that caused a lot of ruckus when they put that up. They, they actually called it the tortilla curtain at the time. Right. But the fact is that an asthmatic eight-year-old could have climbed it. Yeah. But it was something to start with. It's something they got for almost free. The, the military put it up, the engineering units. That was a start. Then several years ago, we got the secondary fence. And then we put razor wire on top. Before the razor wire, they were still climbing that and they were getting injured. Injuries have dropped to zero since we put razor wire up there. So this is that, that mix of razor wire. This construction's going on because the original Duncan Hunter fence, as we call it, is being replaced. That's not the wall. That's almost 30 foot tall, 20 some feet tall. That's replacing the eight foot stuff. That actually was programmed under President Obama. That's replacing stuff that's falling apart that was never actually meant to be a fence. But that stuff is so effective that in those areas, nobody is crossing. What we had to do with the military because this last incursion was they had to put uh, concertina or barbed wire up everywhere 
because there was big gaps and holes in the infrastructure. Right. So when people say infrastructure doesn't work, I'm going to tell you there's a reason they put up all that barbed wire. That's infrastructure. That's fencing. It right. kept people out. Without them doing that, the military, well, we would have been overrun. That's what the U.S. military is here on the border doing as Stuff we like speak. That. Yes. When people say, why do we have the military at the border? They can't do anything. Yes, they can.